Hello and welcome back to GoldStockTrades.com. Today we have a returning guest with us, Jeff Pontius. Jeff is CEO of Corvus Gold. Corvus can be traded as KOR on the TSX, and it also can be traded as CORVF on the OTCQX. Thanks, Jeff, for being here with us today. It's great to talk to you, Jeb. It's a busy day for us. Jeff, you announced this week an, uh, a preliminary economic assessment on North Bullfrog. Talk to us about some of the highlights of this PEA. Yeah, well, I think it, it's a, a very important document for Corvus Gold in that it is a proof of concept of a base case project that we have, uh, economic project that we have there from our initial exploration of the North Bullfrog property. It uh, delivers some good economic performance with cash costs at about uh, uh, six in the low 600s, uh, 620, 635, I think, or just gold and no byproduct silver. And all in costs that are right around 450 bucks an ounce, and that's capital, closure, everything. Uh, this project produces on a cash flow basis uh, about $480 million and has an NPV after tax at a 5% discount of $250 million. Those are important numbers in that the after tax NPV of this project is five times what our current market cap is. So Corvus has got a tremendous asset here uh, that is really going to be important in driving the value of the company and the value of the stock going forward. But probably more important to us is it's really laid the groundwork for the ability for our exploration guys to get out there and find more of these deposits. The detailed information that came out of the study of our yellow jacket deposit led to a number of high quality exploration targets being defined. And we're in the process right now of drilling those. And that process will take place all during this year. So the, Listeners will be able to see quite a bit of news flow out of Corvus and particularly directed towards the exploration and discovery of a new vein system. And some of these targets are quite big, much bigger than, uh, than Yellow Jacket is right now. Jeff, talk to us a little bit about the, the, the gold price that you use because, you know, we have to compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges. You, many companies are dealing with economics and gold prices much higher. You guys used a very conservative gold price. Yeah, it's uh, first of all to to define the area that we were going to mine uh, that would go into our PEA analysis or our financial analysis. We used an eight, uh, nine hundred dollar pit, so we put nine hundred dollars in at the break even price for gold to design the initial pit. And then we, inside that design, we created the mining plan for uh, the overall project. And what that's led to is the project being uh, very resilient at lower gold prices. If you look at the sensitivity table we published, we're talking about a project at $1,000 gold that still produces uh, an excellent economic uh, performance with uh, IRRs at 20% and still generating an after-tax value of more than $100 million. So this is the kind of project that people want in the future to develop because it has the downside gold price risk uh, factored into it already. And of course, if we see gold price go up, which we all think it's going to do here in the future, uh, this project's got some tremendous leverage to be a real superstar economic performer. Jeff, let's discuss the development of North Bullfrog be, uh, because you found this high-grade yellow jacket uh, discovery. Uh, so talk to us about the, the development from a, a sort of a large uh, low-grade to a, a high-grade uh, discovery. 
Yeah, it's uh, we originally came in. There was outcropping mineralization that we discovered at North Bullfrog. Uh, we worked on defining that at a time when we had a higher gold price, and it looked quite attractive. As we were drilling off that deposit on the margin of it, uh, we intersected this vein system, which was a blind discovery. It wasn't exposed at surface, and there was no indication that it was there. So in some respects, it's a bit of serendipity in the drill hole that actually discovered it. And following that drill hole, we then were able to come in with core drilling, define the vein system, figure out the direction it was going, and its dip. And we've come in and done a lot of infill drilling over the last uh, 12 to 14 months. Uh, that infill drilling has created a, a high-quality resource with most of this resource in the vein system in the measured and indicated category, which is the highest level of confidence that we have in defining these resources. So we put a lot of work into defining the project and the target and validating the exploration model and uh, creating a, a good quality financial representation of this ore body. That gives us great confidence to go forward. So a lot of work, a lot of money's been spent, about 60,000 meters of drilling, about $30 million have been spent, and we have taken this project from an initial discovery right up to what looks like a very attractive mine plan in a fairly short period of time. Jeff, in Nevada, we're seeing some of the, the higher cost producers struggling. Uh, we've seen this over the past couple of months with the challenges of some mines uh, with, with higher costs uh, going bankrupt. What makes Corvus's North Bullfrog so attractive in this environment? Well, I think that's a, uh, you know, that's, that's a great observation, and we've seen that, uh, that somewhat of that carnage in the business here. Uh, and what really puts Bullfrog, North Bullfrog, away from uh, some of these big tabular low-grade bodies that were brought into production uh, is the high-grade core that we have. That is the real economic driver of this asset. It, it, it produces most of the cash that we make. So it is what makes it quite resilient in low gold prices. So when we look at our project compared to others, we have a core of the project that is an absolute slam dunk, go build it kind of uh, deposit. And around that will be uh, lower margin, uh, but extensive ounces of low grade that eventually can come into the mine plant, uh, whether it be with higher gold prices or the fact that operating costs have dropped. So when we look at our our uh, cost per ounce coming out of the mill part of our deposit, we're seeing costs that are below 400 bucks an ounce. And those are extremely competitive, and that's what gives us the confidence that this deposit and these additional additions to this deposit are really going to be a, a strong economic driver in any kind of gold environment. Jeff, before Corvus, you were exploration manager for... Uh, Angle Gold Ashanti, uh, talk to us about some of the majors, some of the issues that they're facing over the next couple of years with r reserves declining and resources declining, and where a North Bull Bullfrog could fit in uh, to some of these mid-tiers or, or majors as a potential uh, project in the pipeline. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a tough market for the producers right now. They've uh, they haven't had a lot of access to development capital, particularly for the big high capital projects. And so they've been mining their existing deposits uh, longer and longer. And as you mine these deposits, you take the best ore first. And as you get to the end of the deposit, you have the, the lowest grade ore. So overall grades have been dropping in the production sector. And new projects have not been coming online quick enough to replace those ounces. So they're seeing long-term cost pressure going up. Most production profiles for many of the producers uh, have a real drop-off at about uh, 2019. And that's an important date in the fact that North Bullfrog actually, if was, uh, we were to advance North Bullfrog towards production over the next 12 months, we could be in production by 2019. That is an important 
niche to fill with many of these companies. So it makes North Bullfrog quite an attractive asset to many of these companies because it does fit in their production profile. And it does have low costs, lower than their average costs that they have now. And it would it is a mine with great exploration potential and has an ability to grow and add value uh, when the new owner has it. So it's it's got all the 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 ingredients for the kind of asset that people want to acquire. And mining companies, production companies, have been cutting their costs. Uh, dramatically over the last couple of years, and that has really manifested itself in lower expiration work going on or, or less expiration work. And so they're sort of forced into a situation now where they need to acquire these ounces as opposed to go out and find them themselves the old-fashioned way, the way we used to do it with Anglo, of direct investment in greenfields and brownfields expiration. So I think that there is certainly a big market for assets like this uh, for the producers, and we're seeing that overall that we're seeing greater and greater interest uh, on the M&A front uh, for projects like North Bullfrog. Jeff, as we conclude here, in addition to having a great asset and one of the top management teams in the junior mining sector, you've been able to maintain an excellent share structure and shareholder base. Can you talk to my subscribers on what makes Corvus unique in that area? Well, I think that, you know, we work very hard to create the best possible company that we can. And it's important to remember that our management team owns 8% of the stock in this deal. And we participate in financings. And uh, we're really putting our money where our mouth is here. And, uh if the shareholder doesn't succeed, we don't succeed. Our total compensation is really bent around uh, making the most value for our shareholders, and we really equate that to the best share price we can get. So this has been a, 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 a mantra of our company, and it has really been uh, an important thing in getting the quality shareholder base that we have. Uh, our shareholders, with our big biggest shareholder being Tocqueville, is uh, very happy to have a management team that looks at at the company and its activity and what it does uh, from the standpoint of the shareholder. And uh, I think that's important. And uh, if you don't have that in a tough market like this, it's really tough to keep the quality shareholders that are going to be with you through thick and thin. And we know that we've been in a bit of a thin patch here. So uh, it's been absolutely essential for Corvus to, to, to have that kind of management style and have that kind of shareholder base. Jeff Pontius, CEO of Corvus Gold, which can be traded as KOR on the TSX and as CORVF on the OTCQX. Thanks for being here with us today and for giving us an update on the Corvus Gold recent preliminary economic assessment. Thanks very much, Jeff. Thank you.